The second algorithm that we want to focus on is linear regression. So with linear regression, what we're trying to do is to understand the pattern or the slope of a given data set. And the assumption that we're making is that this data set has a linear pattern. So here, what we try to do is given this data set, draw a linear line that fits this data as well as possible. So you might probably remember this from your uh, mathematics classes before. What we try to do here is to calculate or estimate this equation that would give us a linear line that would fit this data the best. To calculate the error of this line, we use mean squared error, and it is calculated as the actual value of a data point minus the estimated value of a data point, and then we get a square. We do this for all the data points in our data set, and then we divide this value by the number of data points in our data set. To find the best fitting line, we need to find the values for the parameters of our model, so weight and the bias, that will give us the minimum mean squared error. And to do that, we need to calculate the derivative or the gradient of mean squared error. And this is how it is calculated. To do this optimization, we use a technique called gradient descent. So here in this graph, what you see is given a parameter value, the error that is calculated. So what we do with gradient descent is we calculate at a point where we have our parameter value, which direction to go using the derivatives of the cost function. Uh, to minimize the mean squared or error, or generally the error of the model. Once we have this derivative, we multiply it with a learning rate, and then we subtract it from the weight or the bias, so basically the parameter. And that's how the parameters are updated. But what is a learning rate? So the learning rate tells us how fast or slow to go in the direction that gradient descent tells us to go. So for example, if your learning rate is too low, it might cause a problem of you not achieving the minimum uh, error because you're approaching it very slowly. If your uh, learning rate is too high, you might keep jumping around in your error space and you might never be able to find the minimum. And that's why it's important to choose a good learning rate that will help us approach to the minimum error in a good time. So to sum up, what we do with linear regression is during training, we initialize the weight and the bias as zero. And then given a data point, we predict the result or estimate the result with this given equation. We calculate the error that this equation has, this linear line has on our data set. And then we use gradient descent and our learning rate to figure out what the weight and bias should be or how they should change. And then we repeat it the number of times that was determined by the person who created this model. And during testing, again, given a data point, now that we have a model that has already trained, we can already calculate the result using uh, this equation. Some notes that will make it easier for us when we're implementing this algorithm is, if you remember, this was the derivatives or the gradient of the uh, error function. Um, but there is a simplified version, and here is the calculations. You can try them out yourself if you like, and this will be the version that we will implement because it's easier. And also, while we are implementing this model, we're not going to go over the samples or the data points one by one. We're going to put them in a matrix and we're going to do them all together, all the calculations at the same time. So this was our equation, right, to calculate the results. But if we want to do it for all the data points at the same time, then we can denote the X with a capital X. And what it will look like is basically it will be an array of values, X values. And when we multiply this, or take that product of this with the weight, here's what we're going to have. So we're going to have basically an array um, of weight multiplied with the first um, value, the first data point, and the second data point, and for all data points. And at the end, the y pred predicted uh, will look like this. So when we're calculating the gradients, it's actually going to make it a little bit easier for us because now we can get all the values of X, all the data points, transpose this matrix so that they're a column, and then we can multiply this, or we can take the dot product of this with the Y predicted, but of course it's going to be the difference between the Y predicted and the actual Y and we can just calculate the derivative of the error function in terms of the weight. But these are just some references to make it easier for us while we're coding this algorithm. So let's get started. All right, so let's start the implementation of linear regression. I'm going to, again, uh, define it as a class. And our, in our initialization 
function, we're going to have a bunch of things. So first we need a learning rate, let's call it LR. Uh, and I'm going to pass a default LR. Uh, let's make this 0 0.001 maybe for now. Um, of course, I also need to pass the self here. And then we need a number of iterations. And this number of iterations can also have a default value. Uh, let's say a thousand. And then we, as you know, also have a weight and a bias. I will uh, define them as none for now, but in our fit function that I'm going to write in a second, we're going to uh, initialize them as zero. As always, we need a fit function and then we also need a predict function. So the fit function we're going to use for the training, predict function is uh, for inference. All right, so let's put self here and the data set that we're gonna get from the user. Okay, so let's remember how it worked here. Uh, what we say is at first we initialize the weights as zero and initialize the bias as zero. So let's do that. Get self weights. So if we only have one parameter of one feature in this data set, then we only have one weight, of course. But if you have more than one, then uh, we can have multiple weights. So there is one weight for each feature. Um, so I need to create a zero array and it needs to be as many as the number of features. So how can we get the number of features? Uh, well, we can use x.shape, of course, and that is going to give me a number of the samples first and then a number of features. All right, so now I can use number of features to create the zero array for the weights, and the bias is just going to be zero because it's just one value. The next thing we need to do is predict the result by using this equation, so let's do that. But if you remember, we said we are going to do it more effectively, so let's go there. Yeah, so when we're doing the predictions, we don't want to predict uh, for one sample at a time. What we need to do, what we want to do instead is to do the predictions for all samples at the same time, so we have a array that corresponds to one prediction for each sample. So how we can do that is basically we need to do um, a dot product. So we'll get the dot product of x with the weights. As you see here, dot product of the x with the weights plus the bias. And this is going to give me the y pred. Let's see what we're supposed to do next. Um, what we said was uh, we calculate the error, use gradient descent to figure out the new weights and bias values and repeat this n times. So we'll, we'll do the repeating in, in the last, but we can do these two at the same time. Uh, if you remember, this is what, I, what we use to update the weights and the bias. And for that, we need to calculate the derivatives. So or the gradients, and we know there is an easy way to do that, and it's this one. So we're going to use these equations. So here again, we have a dot product to calculate the uh, gradient of the error function in terms of the weight, and we just have a normal calculation for the bias and gradient. So well, let's start building that up too. Uh, w d w at first is one over number of samples, and we have that already. And we're going to multiply this with um, the dot product of uh, the x again, and the difference between y predicted and the actual y that we passed to this function. Uh, y, oh yeah, it's y pred. Oh, we have an imported numpy here, so let's do that too. Import numpy as mp. All right, the reason here that we're only doing the dot product and we are not doing the uh, summation is because this dot product definition of numpy includes the summation, so it basically gives us one number when you do this calculation here. But if you want to learn more about that, you can go check out the numpy documentation. So let's do db. Again, we need to do one over number of samples, multiply by, this time we need to sum it up, the difference between the predictions 
and the actual values. All right, so now we have the gradients. What we have to do is to update the weights and the bias. So that was quite easy. Self weight, uh, we see here, how do we update them? Uh, is that we get the self weight again, and we subtract self learning rate times DW. And for the bias, the same thing. Uh, DB this time. All right, so these are our updated values, but um, we are going to train this model not only once. If we do run it like this, it's just going to run once and it, and it will be done. But we want to run it as many times as we have in our number of iterations. So for that, uh, we're going to add a for loop here for something in range number of iterations. We need to run this, but as you can see, we're not actually including this part because the initialization happens only once. And then we're going to keep running this um, algorithm that we wrote here over the data set. Oh, it needs to be self. So once this is done, it means that our model is trained already. And then we can go ahead with the prediction. So prediction is going to receive the self and another a new data set. So let's see how we, we said we're going to do that. Uh, inference time is given a data point, put in the values from a data point into the equation, which is quite easy. Okay, we can just literally copy this. And we get the dot product of the weights with the x and then add the bias to it. And then we return the predictions. And that's it actually. Now we have our linear regression class. So let's try this on a data set and see how it performs. So to test this linear regression that we just created, the linear regression algorithm, I'm going to make a regression using a scikit-learn's data set uh, feature. And let's see what this data set looks like on a plot. Okay, so what we want to do is to fit it a line that fits quite well. It's probably going to be like a diagonal line here. And the number of features that we have is one, so we're only going to have one weight. But let's create a, a linear regression object. Um, we have a default value, so we don't really actually have to pass anything to it. The reg, and then I'll call reg fit, x train, y train. And finally, we get the predictions using reg dot predict with x test. Um, of course, we also need to calculate the error on this uh, calculated predictions, the estimated predictions. So let's define a mean squared error function. Predictions, oops. Pass the y test to it and we pass the predictions. So what we have to do is we get the difference between the y test and the predictions. We get their square. And we get the mean of this value. Oh yeah. And that will be the error. Right, let's call it MSC. And well, we can just return this directly. You don't have to pass it to a variable. Um, all right, so after we define this, let's call it here. And print this. All right. Oh, we got an error. So let's see, line 20. Uh, oh yeah, I know what went wrong. So here, yeah, we talked about this actually. Uh, when we're thinking about doing it effectively, here what we're doing is we are getting the dot product of the weights and the x values. So this is correct. But when we want to get the dot product of um, to calculate the gradient, what we have to do is we have to get the transpose of x and then uh, do the dot product. Otherwise, the dimensions don't work. And that's what the error is telling us. There is a dimension error. Uh, so all I need to do actually here is just say get the transpose of x. 
And now it should work. Linear object has no attribute weight, linear regression. Okay, uh, that sounds fair because it's weights and not weight. So let's go line 23, weights. All right, now it should work <laughs> if I'm done with all the typos. All right, so yeah, we do get a result. Our um, MSC, our mean squared error is 783. So maybe we can put this in a graph so we can see it more clearly. So I'll just create a figure using the uh, predictions. This is Reg uh, called the predictions on this. And then I'm creating a, um, a graph that will show me the prediction line. So let's do that. All right, so it looks like we are fitting somewhat well, but not just well enough. We Ideally, the line would be like this, right? So maybe uh, I'll close this and maybe we can change the uh, learning rate and that, that would make a difference. So our default learning rate right now is 0 0.001. So maybe if I make learning rate a bit higher, maybe a bit bigger, maybe that will help. Let's try. Okay, so that's much better. Our mean squared error is 305.7 uh, or .8. And this is what our graph looks like. So it looks like we have a really nice linear line that really captures the slope of this data set. So that's all from linear regression. If you'd like this code, you can go get it in our GitHub repository. The link is in the description. If you have any questions, leave a comment and we'll do our best to answer them. But I will see you in the next lesson.